QuickBooks Online 2023 Reversing Entry Unearned Revenue Customer Deposit Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023 here we are in our gig great guitars practice file we started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial we also have opened the free quickbooks online sample company you can open the two at the same time using incognito support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it or another browser you can open incognito if using google chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser incognito window typing into the search engine quickbooks online test drive we're using sample company to compare the accounting view the one get great guitars file is in and the business view the one sample company is in change between the two views by going to the cog up top switch the view down below opening up some tabs with some duplication of the tabs to put reports in as we do every time right click in the tab up top to duplicate it and then we're going to right click as it's thinking to duplicate it again tab to the middle go down to the reports we want the balance sheet the two famous reports the financial reports by the way if you're in the business view that's located in the business overview and the reports that's where the reports are at in the business view back to the accounting view tab into the right reports on the left we're going to open up the profit and loss as well close up the ham boogie and change the range from 01023 i'm going to go out to 03 uh 3123 our cutoff date is 228 but we're going to go to 331 for picking up the reversing entries that happen the day after the cutoff date let's run it and go and I also I want to see that month by month hold on a second something's not right here let's see it on a month by month so that I can see Jan Feb and March and then the total let's go to the tab to the left do the same thing closing the hand buggy changing that range from 010123 to 0331 not one to three 31 and then run it on a month by month and then run it to refresh it that's the setup process we do every time we're focused here on the cutoff date being 228 february but we're going to do a reversing entry this time which is going to be as of the first day of the following month last time we did a fairly you know one of the more complex adjusting entries that oftentimes won't be there unless you're in the type of industry where you have to deal with an unearned revenue situation so let's do a quick recap just get the back in the mindset of this we've got the unearned revenue uh down below it's a liability account if i go to the flow chart you'll recall we're looking at the revenue cycle at the end of the day we're expecting to have a rep or cash go up at the end of the revenue cycle in some way shape or form that might happen in the easiest kind of cycle depending on the type of industry we're in where we might just have like gig work we have a deposit we just increase the deposit increases revenue possibly with the use of the bank feeds if we're at a cash register we'll typically use the create sales receipt still a cash based system but we're gonna have to do the sales receipt and then deposit an accrual system means that we have to do the work first and then invoice or bill the client, then track the accounts receivable, receive the payment, make the deposit. But some industries actually get paid first. That's when you have this unearned revenue situation. It might be a type of industry where all their revenue is basically unearned at first, such as a subscription model, magazines, newspapers, applications these days where they might get paid for like a yearly subscription or something they haven't really earned the money at the point in time they got paid and therefore it should really technically go into a liability account as opposed to income when they collect the money and then they would need to do an adjusting entry periodically 
in order to account for the revenue that has been earned, the subscription that has actually expired on a periodic basis. Here, however, we're looking at a situation uh, in our example problem where we have deposits on an inventory purchase that's gonna take place in order for the customer to commit and us to hold on to the inventory product or order the inventory product uh, for them for them specifically. So you might have a similar situation in a rental situation where you have the last month rent or something like that. Once again, you got the money before you gave them the goods or services. That's an unearned revenue kind of situation or a, a customer deposit, you might call it. And in other words, when you get the money, you should record it as basically a liability down here in unearned revenue. Now, logistically, however, as we discussed, it's not as easy to put it in unearned revenue down here because you want to be tracking it in the sub ledgers. So if I go back to the tab to the left and we go down to the sales, which is the kind of the customer center and then into the customers. And if you're in the business view, by the way, that would be under the get paid and pay area and then the customers that's where the customers are located and then within within there you can you can then track your information by customer so if i went into this anderson guitars if i if i recorded something to unearned revenue it wouldn't be reflected here in the customer center which as a, on the bookkeeping side the accounting side is what i use to communicate with the customer so i would like things to link up they link up quite nicely if we use an actual receive payment form so we enter the receive payment before the invoice that usually decreases accounts receivable but now it doesn't have an invoice to apply to which means you have this outstanding what you might call outstanding credit that can then be applied to a later invoice when the customer pays so that means we're gonna we have this situation where it's not quite right when we get the first deposit from a financial reporting standpoint but it looks good it looks correct from a bookkeeping standpoint and that's why we're doing the adjusting entry so if i go to the tab to the right let's just take a look at the sub ledger for accounts receivable right click it on the tab duplicating it and we're going to open up another report on the left hand side reports on the left hand side we're going to close up the hand buggy and scroll down to who owes you and we want to open uh, the customer balance detail report customer balance detail let's run it as of a custom date of 022823 and so the total of this broken out by customer it uh, adds up to 2315150 that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet as of 228 and the accounts receivable 23,5150,150. So that looks good. And the issue was that we had a couple that had this negative receivable. You can't have a negative receivable for a particular customer because that means that would mean that we owe them money, which means it's a liability, not a negative receivable. Therefore, we did an adjusting entry for these two clients that had or customers that had a negative receivable for 450 and we increased accounts receivable over here we increased the accounts receivable for that amount if i scroll down and and we did that by the 450 and then the other side went to this unearned revenue the liability account so we just properly recorded it as a liability instead of a negative asset account so it's a little bit different than a book problem where you deal with unearned revenue, in which case you're usually thinking about a situation where all the revenue that a company gets is like, is from uh, unearned revenue, like a subscription model, in which case you would just keep on increasing unearned revenue when you, you collect your, your money on a subscription model. And then you'd have to determine how much of the subscription had expired periodically at the end of month or year decrease unearned revenue and then record the revenue properly for the amount that had actually been earned in this case we're dealing with just unearned revenue for like a security deposit type of situation so it's it's a similar situation 
but you know it's a slightly different scenario here because we're dealing with the the concept of we we need to be able to be able to have so supporting information for the accounts receivable in the sub ledger and there and so notice that this adjusting entry does not have a balance sheet account and an income statement account it's an adjusting entry with two balance sheet accounts so it's not really like a classical adjusting entry which usually has a timing difference between balance sheet and uh, income statement type of account okay so that said now we've done that and i can see that over here in my sub ledger as well because they forced me to to record something to a customer uh whenever whenever i record something to accounts receivable but i didn't want to record it to the actual customers in question eric music here uh because that would add add it to the detail in their customer ledgers therefore we created another account down here and just called it zzz trying to put it at the bottom out of the way and this customer account's going to have all our adjustment entries they have journal entries in them that's not what you usually want to see in a customer type of account so that's why we kind of tried to bury it down here at the bottom because they're not going to match out usually you would see invoices and receive payments that tie out and once they do then this this whole thing would kind of disappear it wouldn't be on this report anymore for example here in this one and this one you would expect it to tie out it doesn't because we don't have an invoice and a payment we have two journal entries so it doesn't quite work the same way that's why we put it into the account at the bottom now remember if you don't want to do that you could create another accounts receivable account but you'd have to set it up as something other than accounts receivable type of account like other current assets so that you don't have the sub ledger related to it okay so now we're just going to reverse it as of march 1st because remember the cus the the bookkeeping process is not wrong their process is just fine it's just that we need to make it the financial statement reporting more correct as of the reporting basis on a periodic basis monthly or yearly in our day in our case as of february 28th the cutoff date so then i'm just going to reverse it as of the first day of the next period note all reversing entries are going to be like the first day of the next period i'm not going to try to try to get it to be more correct for a longer period of time in other words you might say hey why don't i just figure out when the invoice is actually issued in march for these items and then if the invoice was entered in march 15th i can do the reversing entry as of march 15th and then the statements will be more correct for 15 days of march but my point my goal is not to make things more correct for 15 days is to make the adjusting and reversing process as easy as possible having all transactions on one day sacrificing the fact that the financial statements will, will not be perfectly reported in the middle of, of the month or if i was doing this at the end of the year in the middle of the year okay so then if i did this adjusting entry the easiest way to do a reversing entry i should say is to look at the adjusting entry and then just do the opposite so if i let's go back over here in unearned revenue and if i go find the unearned revenue where did the unearned revenue go it is right there if i go into it then i could i could then just say okay let's go into that journal entry and say there's the there's the transaction i'm just going to do the exact opposite so you might even take a screenshot of the adjusting entry and then reverse it this one's fairly basic there's only two accounts affected i'm going to use a journal entry to reverse it as opposed to uh, using the register because of that issue with the name needing to be put in place for the accounts receivable so i'm going to close this out i'm going to hit the ham let's go to the first tab to do it let's first go back to the report then go to the first tab then let's hit the plus button and go to journal entry now all the reversing entries are going to be as of 3 oh, 3 31 2, 3, the first day of the next following period and now note that you might say hey i'm just gonna i'm gonna reverse it and put the debit on top and the credit on the bottom but usually when i'm doing a reversing entry i like to have the accounts the same from top to bottom there's only two accounts right here so it should be easy to see either way but just as a general rule i'm gonna say I'm, this is a reversing entry i'm just gonna mirror the order of the accounts accounts receivable on top but make it a credit 
of 450. That to me is easier to compare to the adjusting entry, easier to build, easier to enter. Some people get upset if you don't have the debits on top, but I, I just think that's an easier way to go. So that's, that's what I typically would do. And when you have longer complex entries like we had with the invoice, then it's a lot easier to do, I think. So this is gonna be a reversing entry. The name, I have to put something here. I'm not gonna put the name of the actual customers involved, but ZZZ, so it'll be out of the way, not mess up the accounting department on the day-to-day. -day. And then here I'm gonna put unearned revenue, unearned revenue, liability account, and there it is. No need for a name on that one. And so let's do it. This is gonna, as of the first day after the cutoff date, reverse it so it's going to decrease accounts receivable putting it to that zzz customer in the sub ledger and under revenue back down to zero so we're back to where the bookkeeper was before so we don't mess them up save it and close it let's check it out and we'll open up the balance sheet run it so now accounts receivable is good as of here right we're still we still have that 450 in place but then we reversed it in the next time frame so that we're back to where we where we were here so that now the next step that the that the that the client is that our bookkeeping department's going to do for Sam the guitar man for example if i go into Sam the guitar man in the sales tab customers and then go down to Sam uh sam the guitar man so notice we have this outstanding unapplied thing right there that's the point that's very obvious so we if i talk to sam and they and he comes in and says hey i'm finishing up my sale we can make an invoice and apply that out to it quite easily that's good on the on the accounting or bookkeeping side of things very transparent so then i'm going to go back up and say the other side went to unearned revenue and we could see that straight up nice and easily down here. So it was 450 and then we took it back down to zero. No impact on the income statement. If I look at the sub ledger to the right and I run this again, run it again, to, this is as of 228. So we're good on 228 and then I'm gonna bring it on up to 033123, run it. And so now we've got all this journal entry stuff happening down here. Notice it nets each other out, 450, 450, the 525, the 525, but it doesn't remove itself from the report because it's because it's not like an invoice being connected to the payment. The journal entries mess things up because they're not designed to kind of match each other out in the accounting system. But again, hopefully it's down at the bottom so it doesn't mess anyone up if we see that same thing and here in the customer center, it's in the customer tab. And it, we didn't mess up like any of our clients here, like Sam, but we've got the ZZZ customer down below, which isn't really a customer. It's that's where all of the junk that we put went. If you don't want this sub ledger at all, then you could do your adjusting entry to another accounts receivable account just to show the adjusting entry but you can't set it up as an accounts receivable type account because that's what is used to create the sub ledger you'd have to make it as an other current asset account and then you wouldn't need to do this whole thing with the zzz which is only here because quickbooks won't let us post to accounts receivable without using a customer which is usually good because it makes us forces us to be in balance with the sub ledger but it does cause problems periodically such as with the adjusting entries if necessary to have them all right so that's it that's all we need to do it looks muy b to the end let's go to the tab to the right and look at look at our reports so i'm going to open the hand boogie scroll down and check it out check out the reports let's type in journal look at the journal and uh closing the hand boogie as of 022823 to 022823 these are the adjusting entries we did last time and i'm going to filter them customize up top filter by transaction type and journal run it so these are all the adjusting entries we did these two are not adjusting entries but everything else adjusting entries this is the last one we did last time 
which is going to be reversed. And notice how I'm going to reverse it like like I put the credit, I put the order top to bottom like this. So it'll be in that order this way as well. So, so it'll have a credit on top. I did the same thing for this one, I believe, which this one is a fairly complex transaction. So if I was trying to compare the adjusting entry to the reversing entry, it would be easiest, in my opinion, to have the same accounts from top to bottom as opposed to, to messing up the order of the debits to have the debits on top and whatnot. So let's go up here and say plus the debits on top and whatnot. <laughs> uh, what a rhyme. Rhyme in it. Okay, so the reversing entry. I think I messed up and hit and entered it as of the wrong date. I think I entered it at the end of the year. So let me go fix that. I'm going to go back on over and say, let's go to my unearned and go into, yeah, I put it in there at the end of the period, but the reversing entry should be at the beginning of the period. So hopefully I put a note in. So you see that I messed up purposely, of course, Oh, three, Oh, one, 23. Okay. So after the purposeful mistake, let's do it again and check it out, run it back. And so let's just refresh the screen this way. So there we go. So I'll close up the ham boogie. Okay, so there we have it. So now notice I got the credit on top and then the debit so I can compare it. So this looks a little bit unnatural if you're used to having debits on top. But again, comparing it, I think works good. Same thing I did up here. We did last time. So that one looks a little bit unnatural, possibly because the debits are not on top. But when you compare it to the adjusting entry, I think it's more comparable easily, more easy to look at, more easy to interpret what happened to distill down the story that happened. And if you can format your transactions, your adjustments to better remind you of what you did, then I think that's more important than having the debits on top. Okay, close, open up the hamburger. We're going to go down to the reports and let's search for the trustee trial balance to see where we stand. Trial, trial balance. And we'll scroll up and, and change the range from 010123 to 033123. Let's take a look at it side by side with the months and then run it. So this is where we are now. We made a change this time to the reversing entry. So our cutoff 228 reversing entry happened in March. So you could check your March numbers if your numbers tied out last time, but you could check any of them if any of the, the periods involved. And if your numbers don't tie out to this, then we'll do, we will do some more looking at the uh, journal reports after the entering of the adjusting entries.